Hello my friends, this is Petro from Gullian Technology. Recently I showed you how you can perform a dictionary attack on an SSH server. Today I would like to show you how you can mitigate this attack. In my environment I will use two virtual machines. I will use the Kali Linux machine as my SSH client and I will use an Ubuntu 22.04 machine as my SSH server. Before configuring key-based authentication, let's check the default configuration of my SSH server. The configuration for my SSH server is located in the file slash atc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. As you can see, both password authentication and pub key authentication are enabled by default. These are the default options for SSH at least on my Ubuntu machine, on Ubuntu. I will test the connectivity right now. As you can see, at the moment I need to specify a password in order to be able to log in to my Ubuntu machine. Oops, I need to add the correct password. I was able to log in the Ubuntu machine by specifying a username and a password. Now, in order to use key-based authentication, first step that we need to take is to generate a public-private RSA key. In order to generate a public-private key, you need to use the command ssh key gen the key ssh key gen command is generating a public private rsa key pair and these files the public and the private key are located in the your home folder in the hidden folder dot ssh now you can specify a different location where you can store this file or you can use the suggested location I will use the default location. Next step, you have the possibility to use a passphrase, to, yes, to enter a passphrase, which will be used with key-based authentication. In very secure environments, you will need to add a passphrase. In my lab, I will not use a passphrase because if you use a passphrase, every time you need to log into your SSH server, you need to specify a password. If you do not specify a passphrase at this step, the only thing that you need to do after is just run the SSH command. This is why I will skip this step and I will press enter. I will press enter once again and as you can see, a public and a private key were generated. The public key is located here and the name of the public key is id underscore rsa and the private key uh, i would say the private key is id underscore rsa and the public key is id underscore rsa dot pub now we can check if the key based authentication is working fine for this i will run the command before running the ssh command we need to copy the public key to the ubuntu server for this i will use the command ssh copy id and i will specify my user account my username on the target server and the ip address of the ubuntu machine as you can see my user account is petro and the ip address of the ubuntu machine is 192.168.1.0 30. You can you have here the confirmation that this is the IP address of my Ubuntu machine. I will press enter and I will add my password. The public key was copied on my Ubuntu machine. Now we need to test if the key based authentication is working fine. For this run the command ssh Petro at specify the IP address. So please adjust your 
the SSH command according to your environment. Specify your user account and specify the IP address of your target server. From the output, you can see that I was able to log in to the Ubuntu machine without specifying any password. After we ensure that key-based authentication is working fine, we need to disable the uh, password authentication on the Ubuntu server. For this, I will run the command sudo vim slash atc ssh slash sshd underscore config and I will press enter. I will specify my password and I will uncomment this line and I will change the option from S to no. So I, I, what I am doing, I am disabling password authentication. I will press the ESC key, I will add a colon and X to save the file. Now if we run the grep command, we can see that we do not find we do not find anymore the, the line which starts with the pound sign. I will adjust my grep command, I will run it once again and as you can see password authentication is disabled it is not enabled anymore in order for these changes to take effect we need to restart our ssh server for this you can run the command sudo systemctl restart sshd i will check the status of the SSH server with the sudo systemctl status sshd. The status of my SSH server is active and it is running fine, as you can see from the output. Now, the last step is to, I will exit from the Ubuntu server. The last step is to confirm that password authentication is not working anymore and we cannot perform the dictionary attack. For this, I will use the Hydra command. Before running the Hydra command, I will uh, change the location of... I will uh, jump inside this folder where the word list with the most used 1000 passwords is located. Uh, just a second, let me check. So I will jump into the WPX folder. Here I have a directory with the name ord list. I will jump into ord list directory and now I will run the Hydra command. I will specify the my user account which is Petru. I will specify the file which contains the 1000 most used passwords with the capital dash P and I will specify the IP address of the target server. In my case this IP address is 192.168.1.130. Also I will specify the protocol in my case, I am using SSH, so I am trying to perform a, a dictionary attack on SSH. After writing this command, I will press enter. From the output, you can see that my server, my Ubuntu server, does not support any more password authentication. This is a good thing. This means that we mitigated the dictionary attack. I hope you'll enjoy watching this video. If you liked it, please press the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future videos. Until next time, see you. Bye.